tuberculosis in the 21st century, uh, social policy greater than the nation state by Roddy Young. We're going to look at how genetics will influence social policy, and there'll be a case study uh, on the challenges of antibiotic resistant TB. Points that will be covered in the talk today what is social policy, uh, infectious disease mortality, and how it has changed the face of social policy. Look at genetics and overcoming in the coming of age of sociology with things being defined as genes and New Zealand's early response to TB without antibiotics and how high the death rate was. Going to look at TB and antibiotic resistant disease now looking to plunge the world into crisis. We're going to look at the hubristic disease or man-made diseases that come from a lifestyle choice and are putting people outside social policy health. We're going to have a um, how social policy manage um, untreatable disease um, compound by people who want, won't help themselves and looking at the neoliberal making with social policy harder because infectious diseases have no consideration for the market. So what is social policy? Um, social policy is concerned with the ways in which we distribute opportunities, resources available in society and influence well-being. And we'll be challenged in the future by diseases that were once under control but now are becoming resistant to antibiotics. Key dimensions of social policy is justice, equity, freedom, need, and citizenship. And they are dependent on an environment that is disease free and where the prospect of disease is kept in check. Just as social policy developments, uh, <coughs> changes have a dominant feature on the political life in the latter part of the 20th century. Uh, the same can also be said with the health of a nation with the use of antibiotics to extend life expectancy of its citizens. However, the loss of the effectiveness of antibiotics to resistance bacteria like the tuberculosis bacteria uh, will impact in the early part of this new millennium. As countries engaged in continual changing economic, political, social environments um, to a threat called antibiotic resistant disease. And the co control of this disease, tuberculosis, can be controlled by a cocktail of four drugs taken over six months. The problem is people feel better after the first week and stop taking them. Okay? And so what's happening in, is in the world, we're getting um, resistance. Tuberculosis has been with humans since cattle were domesticated 10,000 years ago. Despite the common belief that it has been cured, TB still causes more deaths worldwide than any other infectious disease. In 1993, the World Health Organization recognized TB as a worldwide epidemic and declared the disease a global emergency. This is the first time the WHO has made such a declaration about any infectious disease. The second, every second, one person in the world is newly affected with tuberculosis. In the UK, 63% of all tuberculosis cases are in the London region. The most serious affected groups are people from Southeast Asia, homeless people, elderly people, and HIV sufferers. The increase in TB in these groups has been linked to growing poverty, political instability and immigration, reduction in public health care provisions, intravenous drug use, HIV infection, and new resistant strains of TB. And get vaccinated with VCG, um, which is cheap and has few side effects. Um, in the UK it works over 70% over of all cases. In India, however, for some reason genetically, um, it's ineffective on the population there. Um, scientists are still trying to find out why the effectiveness of the vaccine varies across much of the world. The vaccinations um, can also help with the risk of um, compromised immune systems with HIV. So TB around the world, this is in 1990 to 1999, estimates of tuberculosis deaths seen um, in Southeast Asia, there was 12 million. We have 2,000 deaths in Australia and New Zealand from tuberculosis, and the total deaths were 30 million people. 
um, in January um, 2003, they're using text messages in London to actually get the, um, to remind people to take their medication. Um, the UK is now at third world levels of TB and it's starting to spread out of London and less there was um, a website you can find these things out. Um, in the eight decades spanning um, 1900 to 1980, infectious disease mortality in the developed world, that's the Western countries like America, New Zealand and Australia, were 700 and, um, 797 per 100,000 and that was reduced to 36 per 100,000. And that's a tribute to public health improvements and also the impact of antimicrobial therapy, which is antibiotics. However, in the last 15 years, from 1981 to 1995, there has been a rise in mortality from 36 per 100,000 to 63 per 100,000. So there's something happening. The two biggest growth areas is in New York City and in London, first world medic and they can't control TB and it's starting to, it, it's starting, we've heard the crack of the start gun, we haven't heard the roar of the finish and this is what this presentation hopefully does, is it introduces you to this. And that was in the first world, however in the developing world there's been no such success story. 30 million people have died of infectious diseases just in 1993 and almost a quarter of the global deaths are these three big bacterial diseases, pneumonia, tuberculosis, and di diarrhea diseases. Ever since antibiotics have been discovered, the resistance has been building up and coming back on humanity like a tidal wave. And the hint of, of what this is like is when SARS broke out. You got it, you died. All you can do is contain it. There's no treatment for it. But the vector, the way it transfers, TB is exactly the same. If I cough on my hand and touch the door handle, you touch the door handle and rub your mouth, you've got TB. It's very infectious. So genetics, why it's important is it's genetics that is making it antibiotic resistant, but I'm also looking at on the microscope scale how it's going to create the coming of age. French writer, Emile Durkheim, <coughs> he, um, his predecessors, um, he thought was too speculative and vague, and that was a guy um, pronounced Kuhn. Yeah. And so they invent, he invented the word sociology, and he had to um, carry out, he wanted sociology to be on a scientific basis. So Durkheim believed that we must study social life with the same objectivity as science is studied in the natural world. And the social life can be analysed as rigorously as objects or events in nature. To become scientific, according to Durkheim, sociology must study social facts, aspects of social life that shape our actions as individuals, such as the state of the economy or the influence on religion, and today the understanding of genetics is now come into this sphere. Durkheim used the word things, um, in his first principle of sociology and, uh, and I'm suggesting today that these things are now defined, alleles, genes, chromosomes, DNA. It is my contention that soci social policy understanding is now dependent on the understanding of advanced genetics as this is the science of things that gives sociology its coming of age. So New Zealand's early response to TB Healthcare has been the central uh, to New Zealand's welfare state. State responsibility for healthcare has been generally accepted in the past because individuals do not have control over their own health. At the time in New Zealand,